here at Sawgrass Recreation Park. I know a lot of you guys are stuck at home, you're cooped up, probably want to get out and see some of the world. We're out here in the Everglades in one of our airboats, and I figured since you can't come out and see us for now, maybe hopefully down the road you'll be able to get to see us. In the meantime, we're going to have you guys come with us on a little virtual tour of the Everglades. Sit back, enjoy. It looks kind of ugly on the surface. It's just kind of this dark mud and there's grasses and some water. And it looks like to a lot of people at first impression, kind of a, just an empty space. But as you look around, you'll start to hear moving things. You'll start to see fish popping up, birds flying in the distance. The whole system is uh, very complex and it changes throughout the year. Season, we have like a, a dry period from November going into this time of year around April, May, June, uh, where the water levels get really low. Uh, even the wet areas are only just a few inches of water. And as you can see, you have like over here, almost like this kind of trapped little area where a lot of fish and stuff will then kind of be staying there until the water comes back up and this all gets covered over again. During that time, a lot of the birds come from inland, come inland from like the shore areas or the drier areas of the Everglades that have more elevation into these areas. A lot of them are smaller ibis, uh, which is a white bird with a long kind of thin bill to poke into the mud. Uh, the uh, the wood storks, the egrets, um, but they like this type of environment because there's a lot of food very kind of concentrated. Instead of water covering everything and the fish and the little critters in the water kind of being widely distributed, they're becoming more concentrated because there are patches like this that are completely dried the out. system is based on is this substance. It's a peat, which peat is not really a soil. It's kind of uh, broken down organic materials that form over thousands of years. Because the oxygen levels in our water is actually quite low, the breakdown of the plants into soil happens very slowly. And so if you start sifting through this, you can see all kinds of little bits of plant material still in it, not broken down fully. So this muck, which as you can see is incredibly soft, is what the foundation of the Everglades is based on. The vegetation that grows here slowly dies, falls to the bottom, rots, decays, breaks down, and kind of feeds into this kind of loop of, of energy moving from the ground to the plants, to the animals, up the food chain, and back down again. Um, and it's this peat that really holds most of the water. As you can see, I grab what looked like dry land, and you can just see how moist that really is. It feels like uh, the consistency of like pudding is basically for the first six, 10 inches. And then under that is a little denser, but it's still very soft mud, sometimes as much as 40 feet down until you get to the limestone shelf, which is a very porous rock, which is again, where most of our water actually comes from down, down below this area, D different types of uh, vegetation that we find. This one grows under the water. It's called bladder wart. And if you look really carefully, you can sometimes find within the vegetation, these tiny little circular spheres, like this one on my fingernail there right there and what they actually have is a small opening and that opening kind of like this will actually quickly slam shut like in thousands of a second uh, around anything that floats in there particles of vegetation a little tiny little you know creature uh, you know microscopic organisms will crawl in there and they slam shut and they slowly digest it somewhat like a Venus flytrap and uh, it's pretty neat uh, how this plant is actually a carnivorous plant uh, it, it, at times of course it'll eat whatever kind of floats in there so it could be minerals it could be sand it could be trash even if it's small enough now these are very tiny and so it has to be fairly small particles uh, but these are basically kind of like your your filtration could form so in the dry season the water levels get really low there's still a little bit of water here but over the next week or two we should probably see it drop another six inches uh, it does drop rapidly in April and into May because we're, we've been dry now for months and it won't really start raining on a regular basis until probably the next three or four weeks from now going into mid-May, late May and into June. Uh, and then of course, August, September, October, the water levels then start to rise because it's very wet. We will also get tropical cyclones, uh, which hurricanes, whatever you want to call them. Generally, they're not destructive. There's just a lot of rain. You get one or two every couple of years that'll come through, maybe blow some stuff around. But for the most part, it's a lot of water. And so right now we're gonna kind of hitting the bottom here at our lowest levels water-wise. And here we have about maybe eight to 10 inches of water at most. And over here to our left, as you can see, of course, theoretically, even though we know that's all water in and around and through and under this mud, it's basically dry. 
Uh, I would have a difficult time getting an airboat through there over a larger distance. I would eventually have to stop and get out and walk back. You can see how thick it is at the base. This is just a single plant. You can see when it's all clumped together like this, it forms this seemingly impenetrable kind of wall of vegetation. But you can see how, you know, real closely you can get these little kind of holes and pockets through that animals can use to travel around. And the sawgrass itself, though, if an alligator needed to, could actually just crawl up on top of these two and just kind of lay across them and distribute his weight. I could probably stand on this without sinking into the mud. And that would be a good way for them to be able to get out and sun themselves. Birds will often get down inside, nest in there. Or even I've seen a few species out here that'll actually take the tops and literally tie them into little, you know, holding kind of cup holder shaped things with little nests built into that. Oh. It's actually pretty neat, yeah.